Good morning, First Lutheran Church, Cincinnati. Pastoral intern Tyler coming to you today, uh, midweek prayer. Uh, today is January 20th, uh, and it's also Inauguration Day, so it's a big day for our country, uh, especially after uh, the last sort of several months of, of unrest. So I figured today um, would be as good a day as any to offer a, a special prayer for our, our leaders and for our government. Um, this is really important for us, and you know we don't live in a in a bubble. We don't live in a a Christian bubble to where we can only interact with uh, the people in our congregation, but we interact with people across the uh, across the nation and across the world. Um, and so, obviously, I'm coming to you a little early today. Uh, the reason being the uh, the oath of office will be at noon, so I'm not expecting a whole lot of people to to watch. Um, <laughs> to watch my midday prayer at that time. So uh, that's just something for us to to sort of do together today. Um, I think a lot of us probably do feel some uh, relief, and some of us probably feel some fear or anxiety on what's going to happen over the next uh, over the next administration. And that's totally fine. Um, it's totally fine to feel that way. That's a, a reality of of um, of the government that doesn't necessarily always do what we want it to do. Um, but we also trust in God, who's sovereign. We trust in God, who provides and gives good things to to all of us. Because um, God's in charge ultimately, um, and I think we kind of run this sort of risky thing when we say, "Oh, God's in control of everything. God's going to let everything happen according to God's will." Um, and that's that's not always true. Um, God sometimes lets lets uh, lets evil things happen. God sometimes lets um, lets suffering exist. I'm learning a little bit about that in my um, in one of my classes. We're talking about God, evil, and suffering, and uh, we've looked specifically at the story of Job and how could God allow a righteous man like Job uh, to suffer, to lose everything that Job has. Um, for those of you not familiar with the story of Job, Job is this man who has uh, who has a lot of sheep and uh, cattle. Um, he's a very rich man. He has a lot of children. And um, Satan one day goes to God and asks to uh, to basically test Job to to inflict um, a number of of things on him uh, to cause him suffering. So he loses all of his his wealth, um, and even his children die. And then later on, uh, he gets uh, very painful sores all over his body, and and um, he's he's tempted to curse God. Um, at the end, of course, we have a happy ending of that story, and God chooses to give everything back to Job. Um, but it's not necessarily a story, I think, about how God um, rewards people who suffer. Um, it's more of a question of wrestling with God and talking about why do we suffer, or why do bad things happen, or why is why is life so difficult? And this is especially, I think, relevant for us who've lived the past year in the pandemic. Uh, why is life so difficult? Why? What did we do to deserve this? And that's not really the question I think we need to be asking. I think the question that we should be asking is, suffering exists in this world. It's a reality. Um, it, it's, just, it's just our reality. Um, but the question is, what do we do about that? Why? How do we live uh, in the middle of suffering in a world that's not quite yet, um, hasn't quite yet experience the fullness of, of what God has to offer. And so um, that's just something I'm thinking a little bit about today. Um, to talk a little to talk a little bit about us now, um, no matter who's in office, our mission is still the same. As people of God, our mission is still to serve the world. Our, our mission is still to share the gospel. Um, and, you know, it doesn't necessarily make it any more um, it, it doesn't make our mission any different on depending on who's in office. It doesn't make, um, you know, we don't have different priorities now. Um, we might, we might have, you know, uh, the, the point is that we need to, to stick up for justice. We need to pray for that. We need to pray for um, guidance. We need to pray for uh, strength and protection. These are all really good things for us to pray for. Uh, and we pray for our country. We pray for the community. Um, that's one thing I think that gets a little difficult. It's really easy to, for us to pray for ourselves and for our own 
suffering and our own well-being, but one of the things about being in, in community with one another as Christians is we can pray um, for each other uh, and also for people outside of our community. And this is a great opportunity for us to do that. And when we pray for our government, we're not just praying for them, we're praying for all the people that live in the same place that we do. Uh, we're praying for well-being, we're praying for justice, we're praying, we're praying for peace. And so I invite you today uh, to join me uh, as we pray for our uh, for the incoming uh, administration and for the future of our country. Please pray with me. Sovereign God, you were here long before our time and you will remain even when we are gone. All time is in your hands. We give you thanks for the nation we live in and the rights and the blessings that we are privileged to have. We thank you that we're able to have a hand in choosing who will lead us. As a new administration takes charge of our country, we ask you to bless President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. We ask you to inspire them to use their gifts to bring about unity and justice to all who call these United States home, especially the marginalized and the poor. Give them a heart that serves to honor your creation and our neighbors as beings made in your image. Keep us safe from any unrest and violence. Uh, comfort those who are afraid. And grant us courage to live boldly still as people of the cross, loving one another and sharing your good news. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Uh, I know that I, we're getting ready to watch the, the inauguration ourselves because it's, uh, it's definitely a, an historic day. Um, so, but also take some time for yourself, you know, if you, if you need. Uh, today's, regardless, today's the celebration of our country. Um, whether or not uh, you, you voted for the person in office, it's okay. Um, but this is a day to, to sort of remember um, that we are, uh, people here living in the United States, we are one nation together. Um, and it's important for us to, to come together, I think, in, in, um, with peace and unity in mind for one another, making, making this country a, a great place for people to live. Uh, but also um, making, making everybody's place, uh, making everybody's life a, 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 a good life. Um, you know, showing them love and showing them compassion and showing them mercy. So, uh, well, you have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you all soon uh, on Sunday with worship.